Lily, can you smile for us? Yeah, smile. Good. Smile. <laughs> Come on. Big smiles. Come on, Will. Come on. Come on. Big smile. There you go. Good morning, buddy. Good morning. You ever wonder what farm life is like in northern Alberta? I'm Jessica, meet my husband Thomas, and our dog Ellie, and we'll take you through a day in our lives. Let's go! Good morning! So today is going to be a pretty busy day. There's a lot going on. Thomas has to go out and I think he was welding on the cat yesterday and today I think there's some hoses he has to replace because I have to go to La Crete to go get them. So that is the next nearest town to us, the next biggest town. And that's where they'll build like hoses and farm equipment and all that stuff for you. So I'm going to go out there. I'm going to return a bunch of stuff that I bought for my home project, pick up a few things to finish the front porch project, um, grab his, grab the hydraulic hoses for the cat, and um, yeah, I guess we got a few things to do, so let's get to it, right Ellie? She couldn't care less what's going on, she's on, she's on wind sniffing duty, head out the window, doesn't even matter. Last night it was, well it's minus 10 right now, which kind of sucks. It's supposed to be nice for the next couple days, but it's too frozen now for us to um, move the electric wire for the horses. So we might also have to move the horses. Um, yeah, back to their normal pasture and start feeding them, I guess, which kind of sucks. I was hoping to make use out of that, out of that grazing space for another week or two at least but we'll get them moved over today as well get some bales out for them so Ooh, it's gonna be busy well apparently I'm too late the horses had to be moved because they broke out <laughs> good thing Thomas has Carson you could take these guys anywhere this isn't your this isn't your pen keep going keep going Keep it going. Oh, they're all coming now. All right, let's get them over there. Hi, boys. Good morning. <laughs> okay, boys, you don't belong here. That's your taste. Let's go. Let's go. Out. Come on. He might be shaking partially from excited and cold. He was shaking like before I even got him. Oh, he's probably cold. It was like, it was pretty cold last night. Come on. Everybody go. Hey, hey. All right, normal pens for everybody. Willie, your buddies are back. Hi, handsome. Hi. So, pretty good start to the day. Um, horses are already moved into their pasture because they're escape artists. A little sooner than I planned on doing it today, but that's that's okay. It is what it is. It's done. All we gotta do is go roll up that electric wire and see if we can pull the post. I'm not sure if we can. It's um, the ground got pretty hard the last couple days. Um, got uh, some vegetables dropped off at my mother-in-law's from town so that she can make her salsa recipes today. Um, I picked up the hose that the boys want the ends changed and I'm just pulling into the town and you can see, you can see the smoke everywhere. So let me back up. November 1st here is when burn season opens. So we've finished all of our pickups, all of our returns, 
uh, got the hose done that Thomas needed and even managed to sneak in some groceries and a little coffee stop. So I will consider that a win. Um, Ellie is very content just having a little snooze back there. So we'll let her sleep. Um, as I'm driving home, you can really see the smoke that's in the air. Now I'm gonna have, you're gonna be able to see a lot of smoke um, around me upcoming because November 1st is what we call open burning season. So with that, where we live in the middle of the forest, this is why we have so much smoke here. I'll explain. So where we live in the middle of the forest, people clear land. Now they clear land that they purchase from other people. They clear land from logging companies. They clear land that is from government sales. All of the land that's left to purchase, I should say, around us from the government is all trees because we live in the middle of this forest. In order to utilize the land, we need to clear it. Now, you can pay a company to log your field, log your forest, but they can only take the trees that they can use. And what do you do with the rest of the scrub? You push it into windrows and piles, and then it gets burnt. Now, in the summer, we have to have burning permits where you actually apply to be able to, you apply and then they give you a permit to be able to burn the particular thing that you are issued a burn permit for. So say a burn barrel in your yard. That would need a permit for the summer. Every Anything that you burn that isn't a food related fire. So you can have a campfire, you can have a small backyard fire pit, you can have a barbecue. So contained cooking fires. That's it. Everything else you have to have a permit for. And that's because in the summer, it can get really dry around here. And not just really dry, we live in the middle of the forest. So if you get um, any sparks going into trees, even like the town of High Level doesn't allow fireworks because if any of the sparks go into the trees, you have a huge fire outbreak. Um, and it can be incredibly hard to control. And what I learned too, is that the fire will burn down into the peat moss of the forest and that just get, means that you are stuck with this fire that's burning under the ground and it will stay burning all winter long and then in the spring after everything's melted off that fire can all of a sudden pop up and start burning again so it's a, it's a huge risk to have fires in in the forest so you have to be very careful so that's why uh, burning is a controlled um, activity around here. Now, with that, come November 1st, the season opens up. Typically, we have snow on the ground, so that, I think that's the reason around why they cho choose November 1st, is the snow dampens, um, like sparks coming off of the fire, typically the end of the snow, and you don't have to worry about burning. So I'm really curious how it's gonna be this year with, it, there's not a skip of snow anywhere, which is really weird for us. So I'm curious how, We'll see how this fall plays out. So all these fires, all this smoke that you see is from all of the farmers and the land clearers that have all this brush piled all summer. They've been working on on getting, um, getting all their logs and sticks piled up um, in rows, in piles, however they their equipment is set up to do it. And then they go around and they light them. And some people are as intense to light them that they go out October 31st at 11.59, they're just waiting for that clock to turn um, midnight, hit November 1st. It is, it's pretty intense. So the last two days these fires have been given her and the smoke has really accumulated. It's starting to, it's starting to get pretty heavy. So there you go, you can see pretty, you can see pretty clearly the smoke on the horizon. So you have, you have, oh where's my finger? So you have farmland, cropland, and then right there, that whole purple, yellowy, gray layer, that's all smoke, and then that sky above it. That's not fog, that's nothing else, that's just smoke. Yes, dear? You look awfully clean for a farmer. How are you actually working today? <laughs> yeah, I went and welded up that ear on the cat. Oh, nice. Just got back. Hi, Kira! Hey, Duke! Hey, Duke. Hey, oh, you guys don't want to step in the mud? Can you let her out? Coming out. <clears throat> All the friends! So we're headed out now to one of our quarter sections that we have a clearing slash use agreement on. And a really good friend of ours, he uh, piled 
all summer for us, so we were able to go out November 1st and get that stuff lit. Although we're a little bit behind, it's November 2nd now, but that's okay. Details, minor details. So we're gonna head out there, we're going to, um, we're gonna get those lit. Uh, we also need to do a little bit of work on the cat. I think Thomas did some um, welding, and I picked up a hose this morning to replace on it, a hydraulic line, I believe. And, um, yeah, let's, let's take a look at what a, what a cleared and piled field looks like and we'll get these things lit and add to all the smoke the farmers are making. We're one of them. Alright, we've caught up to Thomas. He's driving one of the service trucks. I'm just gonna park here because I don't want to take my SUV through those ruts and we'll go jump in with Thomas. All right, so here's what a fresh cleared quarter looks like when all of the brush is in rows. So big long rows, they go the entire length of the quarter section and we light them at both ends and they burn to the middle. Ellie's just having a blast on the back of the truck. This is where she scopes out all her deer and squirrels and prairie, no, what are those called? Those grub grouse. Yeah, whatever those little birds are, spruce hands. You don't think it's gonna burn? No, no, it's gonna burn like a hot day. It's hot already. Well, what are you worried about? What are you worried about? Oh, it's just big fire. That's all. You just want to admire it? It is our trusty torch. What's been sitting for a year? It's nice and dry.
leave Thomas out in his happy place, lighting his fires. He's going to be out there, who knows, probably till midnight or later. And he's going to go back tomorrow and he's going to light some more. So I figured we could just leave him to it. And before I have to go feed horses and uh, get ready for supper, I figured I would quick race back to our house and... Uh, put in the new front porch light that I got. Uh, my mom, my brother-in-law, and sister picked it up while they were shopping at one of our favorite stores that we go to in Edmonton. So they found one of the lights that was actually in my watch list for a store and they got it at uh, Habitat for Humanity where you get lots of stuff on great deals, stores clearing out, uh, building projects that don't go right, that they're liquidating the, f the rest of the products from the sale, that sort of stuff. So. Um, got that light. I have pulled it out of the box. It looks great. I'm a little worried it's going to hang a little bit lower. And when you marry into a Dutch family and everybody is six feet plus, you have to be really careful about how low your light fixtures hang, which coming from a family of five, five and a half foot tall people, you don't really think about. So we're going to put it in. It's going to be fine. Um, if it is a little bit low, I will just look for a different light and I'll put this one in my dining room or something because it's quite lovely so well we beat Thomas to back to the farm let's get this light in So first things first, we're going to make sure that we ground our whole electrical box by tying in this ground wire. Alright, so your big lights like this typically have a hook in them. And this hook right here is what you hook to your stabilizer wire so that if you drop your light, it doesn't fall on the ground. Um, there was a cable in here, but it was broken. I mean, you're buying secondhand lights, so you can't expect them all to be perfect, right? So there, so now my light can hang there while I work. And I will move the camera so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so now that we're up here, you can see the three wires that I have to attach. So we have black, white, and ground. So we're gonna make sure that white to white, black to black, and ground to ground. I'm gonna shove all this extra wire up here before. I start. There we go. Alright, so first one first. Let's get the ground out of the way. So here's our ground. This is copper wire. We're going to wrap the ground from the light around it. And then always take a moret and finish it with a moret. Alright. Ground's done. Tuck that guy out of the way. All right, next we have white to white. So here's our white ends. Wrap them around. I'm also standing on my tippy toes. So if I got a little shake on, that would be why. Because unlike my six foot, six and a half foot husband, I am barely five feet tall. All right. And black to black. There we go, black to black. And a moret. All right, so now this fixture has holes in here, you can, right there. And these holes, these screws go through. So make sure our screws are set, they're right into the box. Nice. All right, we're going to tuck all our wires in the, in the cap here, try push some of them back up into our fixture, and um, wire our holders up. Okay, so I put this piece up, and what happened is there's too much of a gap between the base of the light and the ceiling, which means it's holding pegs, I'm not sure what they're actually called, are too long. So what you have to do is shorten them, and that's where they are. So there's a little nut on them, like that. And what you do is you thread the nut lower, and then you tighten the bolt back up. So now the remaining bolt that's sticking out is nice and short, and that sucks your light up to the ceiling. So we adjust them, and then pull our light up and see if that fixes it. And if it doesn't fix it, then we 
do it again. And I'm sure there's a way to measure this, but I don't do it often enough that I forget these tricks until after them. Like, oh yeah, if you would have measured this and that, you would remember. But it's a little bit of a cut and fit game with this house just because it's it's an old trailer. It's been close enough and close enough for so long that now I've bought it and you're trying to fix it up and do things and things aren't square and straight and things aren't anchored in properly so you end up having to like re-screw, re-drill, re-fit, that sort of thing. So anyway, if you're ever building your own house and you hear the builder say that's close enough, stop them right there. Otherwise you're going to have big problems when you're when you're going to put all your finishing work in. So let's fit this light back up and see if we get it nice and tight. Once you get it fitted as good as you can, suck it up, nice and snug, and there you have it. It is hot in here. All right, it has it's full of saran wrap to make sure that none of the jewels get damaged. So we're gonna pull that off now that we're done, and um, let's see if it stayed pretty clean. But anyway, yeah. Peel all this wrap off and see what all of the jewels look like. Okay, so last things, give it a nice little clean. Um, I'm just going to spray it right on the cloth because if you spray it on the glass, Sometimes you'll get like little deflections into your jewels and then um, you end up seeing all the streaks and stuff and I don't really want that. So spray onto your cloth, give the underside a nice wipe. All this, this is a glass piece. So, all right. And you don't, you want to be careful with your light. I know they're anchored really tough, but we don't really need to wiggle it more than we have to. So there we go. Nice streak feet clean. I hope it's streak free. If not, mom will be watching this video and she'll let me know. She is the queen of streak free glass. So hopefully it gets mom's approval. And that's our light. Let's take a look. I don't know everyone, what do you think? I quite like this light. It's pretty fancy. I am not disappointed in the secondhand store find for a Habitat for Humanity light. Something that I didn't even pay close to full price on pretty fancy but I think it looks pretty sharp so now let's see if the boys fit underneath of it the only thing I would like to change is I did buy a light bulb that is yellow and I don't really like that yellowy I like it a little bit more crisp which is unusual I usually like the warm light better so we'll get some different bulbs and make that look sharp but I think this is my corner planter this is my matching light I don't know I think this front porch is coming together pretty good I just need a nice floor rug and we should be pretty much done. Well, I am pretty happy with that light. I I think it looks sharp. I'm excited for it. Um, Ellie can tell I'm done this project. She's right in my space. She wants to go to the farm. We're going to go. We're going to feed horses and see if my mother-in-law needs help with anything there. And then I'm going to come back and study for school because I have one year left of school that I need to pass and pass well. So what do you think, Ellie? Should we go to the farm? Should we go to the farm? Say yes. Say yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. Say yes. 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 Come on. Bark if you say yes. Bark like you mean it. She's too excited. She can't even think. She can't even think. Anyway. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Um, hope it was interesting learning a little bit about or seeing how we clear our land. And and um, it's kind of the part two, I guess, to land clearing is all of the all the burning. Stay tuned. We'll have some next spring on plowing and clearing and root bunching and the hundred more steps that we need to do before we can actually use it for for crops. So with that, we're going to say bye. Come on, Ellie. Come say goodbye. Say bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. We'll see you tomorrow.